Hello, welcome to part two of the So Long tutorial for the McCall's M6304 fully lined John John or Baby Boy romper. I included timestamps and chapters so that you can easily move around in the video. This is part two of the tutorial. If you've missed part one, I will link it above and I will also link it below. I hope you try this. It is beginner friendly and really great as a baby gift or for dressing your child cute every day. So let's get into it. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. Today we're gonna to do a so long tutorial for making a fully lined John John. I have trimmed my seam allowance all along, the top and the bottom, which includes this front part of the crotch. I did not sew this side opening or all along the side of the back. This is not sewn. And on this side, it is still open. The next step is I'm gonna pull this right side out. I'm gonna take a lot of care in this. I'm going to poke out all the corners, get nice crisp edges, and I'm gonna give it a good press. This is not a step to skip. Ironing as you go, whether you're ironing your seams or like this, I'm turning things out and giving it a good press, makes a world of difference in your sewing and should be a good habit and a good practice. So I'm gonna continue turning this out. I'm gonna poke out all my edges. I'm gonna iron it smooth and I'm gonna come right back here. I am back from the ironing board and I very carefully poked out all my corners, made sure I liked how the curves were, gave it a good, good steam iron. This is cotton. Cotton loves steam. It loves a hot iron. I'm really happy with it. So the next step is we're going to turn it inside out again. Don't worry. We are not going to turn these tabs, these shoulder tabs, inside out. We just want the body to be inside out. So make sure you can see this. I'm just reaching my arm through the sides and I'm pulling it inside out. And I'm just going to kind of shake those shoulders back inside. So this is what it should be looking like. I have a tube. So for the next step, this is what's going to give you the nice clean finish, is you're going to reach your arm inside this sleeve or this tube. See, I have this all along my arm. I'm going to grab the end of my lining and I'm going to pull it to meet this side and they will end up being right sides together. So I'm just going to pull it through. You might have to zhuzh it a little bit. Give it a little shaky shake. And as you can see, it is lining up right sides together. And you will have the lining right sides together and you will have the outer fabric, the main fabric will be right sides together. And I'm going to pin this. The only exception will be the crotch part. To remind me not to sew this, I'm going to make an X with my pins. I'm going to 
stick my pins in them in X formation just to remind me that I do not want to sew that together. So I'm going to pin the right sides together. This is actually the side seam that we're pinning all the way around the lining and the main fabric. So I'm going to keep pinning, then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to show you what it looks like. I've finished pinning all the way around and this is what it looks like. Here's my tube. This is where one of my shoulder tabs is on this side. The others are over here. This is the bottom and you notice I have main fabric to main fabric, lining fabric to lining fabric. Down here at the bottom, this is the little X I made with my pins to remind myself not to sew this shut. And you will notice on the pattern piece, you have a little angle right here. You're not going to sew that. You can see I'm marked in red. That's your 5 8 inch seam allowance for this bit right here, which we're going to turn under and is going to become the placket for the snaps. So I'm going to start here at this red mark, right where that angle is, and I'm going to sew 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way around my tube, down here, and I will finish at the same spot, but on the main fabric where the angle hits and secure my stitch. I will do that, then I will turn it out, press it, and I'll be right back with Since you. Since I'm sewing this tube. It's much easier to sew it with the free arm. Again, this is the part I'm leaving open. I'm starting here at this mark. I'm going to sew all the way around, keeping the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Where my shoulder strap is over here, I'm going to slow down a little bit I'm going to make sure my work is neat and I want to make sure because I can feel through here where the shoulder strap is. Make sure that I don't sew and get caught in this seam allowance anything that I don't want to be sewing. Just gently guiding it with my hand as I feed around. I'm coming up on my mark. That's where we've got that little slanted cut. And that's where I want to stop. There we go. So the next step I'm happy with my seams. I'm going to trim this seam allowance because it is a really large seam allowance with the bulk. I'm going to trim it down. Then I'm going to turn this right side out again. I have sewn all the way around my tube and I clipped it with pinking shears. And now I'm going to go into the opening that I left and pull it right side out. This opening is plenty of room for pulling the garment out. Just be a little bit gentle with it so you don't tear anything, pop any stitches, but it comes out very nicely.
And there we go. It is starting to look like a John John. Give it a little bit of a shake. And this is where future you is thankful for past you for taking the time to poke out an iron and get a nice crisp seam. Be much harder to go through this opening up into these corners to poke out a seam. Now, if you have something that did not poke out to your satisfaction, you can take a pin and go at the seam from the outside and kind of pick out a little bit and see if you can nudge it out a little better. So I'm going to go back to ironing board. I'm going to give it another all over press and I'm going to my opening where I turned this garment out and I'm going to fold it in on that 5 8 inch seam allowance just like that. I'm going to push that seam to the inside. I'm going to make it really nice and I'm going to pin it and I'm going to iron it and I'm going to sew this closed. You want to give a good look before you close up your garment and make sure that you like how it is. Then I'm going to close this up and all we have left to do is to install buttonholes, buttons, which you can do on your sewing machine. If you can do a zigzag stitch, you can sew on a button with machine and then install the, the snap. The next step is to install the buttonholes. I do this by eyeball. I've got the front tabs here. This is where I'm going to put the buttonholes. So I take my buttons. I like to use the 22 millimeter size and I like how this red pops against this fabric and coordinates with the outfit. So I'm going to sew my buttonholes with blue thread and I'm going to attach the buttons with red. I think that'll look really nice. So I do this by eyeball. I place the buttons about a quarter inch from the top and then I'll make a line. I like to use soap when it's a dark fabric and just make a line where I want the button to go. I don't know if the camera's picking that up but it's really clear to me in real life here. So I'll make a mark here and here. If you don't have a sliver of soap, you can use a marking tool like this disappearing ink. You put the button where you want it to go. You make a mark on either side of the button. And then if you like, you can draw a line up. I've already got my lines with the soap. And that's where I'm going to do my buttonhole. I have an automatic buttonhole attachment for my sewing machine, which makes this a breeze. But even when I do it with the manual setting on the machine, it's pretty easy. So I'm going to go over to the machine. I'm going to do the buttonhole and we're one step closer to being finished. Okay, I have it lined up where I want it and it's ready to go. One button hold down, one more to go. I installed my button holes and I must need to bring my machine in for service. I will show you here where my button hole extended past my marking. So I think it needs an adjustment. When I saw this one go wrong, I went ahead and didn't adjust 
for this strap because I want them to be the same. It's not the end of the world, but I would have rather had my buttonhole end here. I just didn't open it up all the way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark the center. That's where I'm going to stitch my button. And just I just eyeballed it. I'm just going to go into the center. I think I'll use the purple. I don't think this blue will show up on the blue. I'm going to make a dot in the center. This is disappearing ink. The moisture in the air will take that mark away. I can clearly see my marks. I don't know if it's showing on camera. I can see my dots. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to attach the buttons to my straps and let me show you how I do that. My sewing machine does have a buttonhole setting. If yours does not, you can set up a zigzag stitch and drop your feed dog so that it doesn't want to pull the fabric and the button forward. So if you know where that setting is on your machine, drop the feed dog and do a zigzag. I have a button stitch, so I'm going to use that. I simply place my strap under the sewing machine. I'm going to put my button on top of the mark. And I'm going to lower the needle using the hand crank into the hole. I've got it in and now I'm going to drop my presser foot. Sometimes if you don't lower your needle into the fabric to hold it securely, when you drop your presser foot, it push the button out, kind of like tiddlywinks. Now I have sewn so many of these buttons with the machine. I know on my machine, if I set it up for a four stitch width, that is going to go perfectly between the buttonholes. Fun fact, most of your manufactured buttons are going to have the same distance between holes. So some of your smaller buttons and some of your larger buttons are going to have the same stitch width. So I am going to start my stitch and I might start with hand crank, especially if I'm new to this and just hand wheel my stitches. When I am positive that I'm not going to have the needle land on my button and break the needle and the button, I will go ahead and let the sewing machine do its thing. Sometimes I like to run the stitch twice for extra security. Cut my stitch. And there I go. Now I can trim this thread. It's too hard to do it one-handed, but if you pull the thread taut and cut the thread, then that last little bit will end up behind the button. So I'm going to trim this thread. I'm going to attach the other button and then we're on to snaps. So all I do, make sure I get this in the shot, is I pin the crotch area and I put the front over the bottom. That seems to be the way most of the ready to made are. I, the tailor pattern where I've got an in-depth tutorial for that one, it's a children's corner pattern. They call for the front to go over the back and for the female end to be on the front side, so female on top. So all I do is I pin front to back and I just kind of eyeball it and feel, am I being even all the way across? And I'm not worrying too much about it. Now for ex from experience, I know that I like four snaps. I like two on this side and two on this side. And I just take this all that comes with the snap set and I poke my holes and I commit to it. 
I put two on this side, two on this side, then I install the snaps. I know, how daring of me. Now I do make sure, let me show you what the snap caps look like. So for each snap, if I can open this, you have a female end, and you have a male end, and you need a cap, two caps for each snap, because you're gonna attach the female end and the male end to make a snap. So I'm just gonna eyeball and look at this. I don't wanna go way over here and have my cap hanging over the edge so I'm just going to eyeball it and make sure I have enough room. I've done enough of these that I feel pretty confident. And I also feel pretty confident that it's not a big deal. The only person who is going to see this is the person who is changing the diaper and dressing the child. Fashion police are not going to be coming and checking your work. So making sure I'm not going too close to the bottom. And you notice as I poke it in, I'm not being too fussy about the spacing. I'm kind of pulling it in and out a bit just to make sure I have a nice good hole there. So you precision sewists, Look away, <laughs> look away while I just eyeball and make this work. Pull up. And now I can see like how accurate I was. And look at that, that's pretty good right there. Let's see the side. All right, I'm happy with that. So what you do is you take your tool and I'm going to apply the top. And this is where you don't want to let your brain check out because you could put them in upside down or backwards. Remember, you want to be able to close this. This is the front. I'm starting with the front. So I've got a cap and I've got a female end right here that's going on top. So if this is going on top, I'm going to see the cap. So I'm just going to poke it through here. That's what we made the hole for. I'm going to take the female end. I'm going to place it there. And I'm going to think about it. This is the part about not checking not checking out your brain. And I'm gonna think, is this how I want it to go? Yes, it is. And particularly when you first start using these snaps, um, you can remove them, and I'll give you a tip on that in a minute. So then simply together, I'm gonna snug the round end of the cap in to the black piece on the bottom, and then I'm just going to press. And what that pressing does is it smashes the prong and it secures the snap together. So let me show you one of the bottom snaps. So on this side, I know that the female end is going to come on top of the male end. So I want the rounded cap to be on the bottom. Try to make sure that I'm showing and not just telling. So I've got the rounded side down. I know that the front is coming to the top. I'm thinking about how it's going to close. And let me find, now I need to open up this packet. These are the male ends. My snap collection's a little bit embarrassing. I 
have a lot of choice. But I also sew a lot of these. So I'm going to put the male end, and before I smash it, Yep, that's how I want it to go. So I'm going to take my tool. You've got this round, um, not round. You've got like a divot in the black disc. And that is where you're going to put the cap. This is the cap see if this is showing. That's the cap. This smooth round side will fit into that disc nicely. And then I just press. And there you go. You can see, let me get you close up. There's the male end. The prong has been flattened. And then I'll give it a test. And we've got a good snap. And I am not afraid about really giving a firm tug. To be honest, I usually don't interface. So I'm going to finish installing these snaps and we're going to be done. So let me just finish up here with the mail. It does help if you do all of one side first and then do the other side so that you're not getting mixed up as to which side this smooth round cap belongs. So I'm on doing the bottom, so I've got the male. I have my tool. Let me see if I can. It's really hard to show this on camera. But right in here is the divot that the cap rests. So I am getting the cap in there, making it rest before I squeeze, because I don't want to crack my snap. And if I had this incorrectly loaded and applied that pressure, I could certainly break my snap. Would not be the end of the world. There are plenty in the packet. If you have to take them out, um, it's not too difficult. But why make extra work for yourself, right? I would rather make more things than make extra work. So I've snugged it in and squeeze. kind of satisfying. I will tell you from experience, if you install a snap and you're finding it a little fiddly to snap, go back and apply some more pressure. You might not have squashed that prong. I don't know if this will show up. That's the trouble with matching so closely. There's my prong. You may not have smashed your prong enough, or it just might be off. Maybe you wiggled this or something in the process of applying your snap. Take it out and do it over again. Because if you are having trouble getting it to click in place, then the parent who is trying to dress the baby is having that same trouble. You don't want to go through making a beautiful outfit and then not have it worn because the snap is too fiddly or only three out of four snaps are snapping. Go ahead and redo it. And I am speaking from experience. Sometimes I'm looking at this and I'm wondering if I was energetic and flattened that too much. So the last snap, see how quick this is to use? So now I am going to test them all out. So I'm going to snap, snap. Hear that nice click? Snap. Snap. 
nice and secure. And we're finished. I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to remove a plastic snap. This is a size 20 plastic cam snap and you'll notice in the middle is the prong that was pressed in order to hold the female side down with the cap side. And this works well for each side. So in this sample, I have a female side of the snap. I've got a towel underneath because what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat the tine of this fork and then melt the prong and it will easily pull away. So let me show you. Now I'm not using my best fork. I keep this fork in with my snap materials. I refer to it as my sacrificial fork. It's got it nice and hot. Let me get it in camera. There we go. And then I just press it in the center. I have the towel behind it because there we go. I don't want to burn myself if I go all the way through. And that's it. Let me know if you try this technique and if you like it. If you like this video, I have other tips and tutorials on my channel. Mostly I sew clothes for myself, but I do sew for my children and grandchildren. I have another video that I think you might be interested in if you like this one. It is Sewing the Tailor Pattern by Children's Corner. Until next time, I hope you have a joyful week and that you find the good in all things, especially sewing. Bye.